an eccentric billionaire with nothing but a bunch of extra time to spare. He's got his favorite subject and he's happy to share everything he knows about Greece. He'll go to every single ritzy secret event and mingle with his buddies in the 1%, but they find his passion an embarrassment and repeatedly ask him to cease. But never one to back down, ever a pro He claims there's nothing else that's even worth it to know So he grabbed his butler Eric and he started a show To see if anything will catch his eye Now every fresh contestant must babble and boast On the subject of their choosing that they treasure the most Put your hands together and welcome your host It's Adam Maximilian, Josephus, Vin Diesel, Riffi It's Tell Me About It Welcome to Tell Me About It, a game show about proving that the things you love are actually, actually uh, oh boy, sorry, I'm a little, oh, a little frazzled. I just got my high school reunion invite in the mail. This is going to be weird to be whisked back to the 80s. Of course, I'm, I don't know, fucking 60 or whatever. Uh, <laughs> sorry, what was I saying? Uh, the things you love are actually interesting and fun. I'm Adel Rafai, local 60-something-year-old eccentric multi-billionaire, and I am still looking for someone to show me something that is better and more interesting than the best 80s movie of all time, Grease. Though I'm not doing this by myself, please welcome my butler who also sat in front of me in social studies <laughs> and whose voice I can control via piano keys, Eric Silver. I think that if you're stealing my youth, you don't get to bring me up to your age. I feel like that's adding huh. insult to injury. Because I didn't even get to a joy like getting out of a DeLorean while you like you did. Okay, well, apologies. I thought giving you the DeLorean afterwards was a treat, but you said it's a shitty car, so I stand corrected. I use it as my bed. It makes me feel special when I wake oh. up in the morning and then it goes, and then it opens no up. It wasn't. Nothing, it was recent, and you said you nothing, were done with it. Nothing better than getting out of bed and hitting your head on a car door. <laughs> That's why uh, the DeLorean is so popular and everyone has one. Eric. Much like the state of Florida, you are a fountain of youth. And yes, I put nodes on your neck and chest at night to steal your life force. Or as I call them, uh, I want to say midichlorian. I take all your midichlorian. I think that's the proper, I think that's a, the scientific term. Yeah, you were done with the DeLorean because you tried to go pod racing and you were finished. With yes, it. You, yes. Some child kept beating you at it. Some child and also that goddamn rascal Sebulba. <laughs> <laughs> now, for listeners who don't know, this is a weird little guy in our town. He walks on his hands and he eats with his feet. He wears little goggles. He has kind of skin tags that hang down from his neck real far down. A but, real um, charmer. He's so attractive. He's a real All the charmer, ladies love yes. him. He always grabs my, every time we see him, I want to be mean, but then he grabs my hand with his foot and he kisses it with, not his mouth, not with something else. It's all reverse with him. That's why he's LL Cool Sebulba. <laughs> That's right. Actually, you know what? It's time to bury the hatchet with Sebulba. Well, Eric, why don't you reach out to him and see if he will DJ our high school reunion? I will absolutely do it. I'll send it by pod and I'll send it by hologram and I'll also write him a little letter and give it, seal it with a kiss. Also, let's budget, I don't know, let's call it $50,000 to commission some fan art of Sobulba DJing <laughs> a high school <laughs> reunion. I think that's I think that's something I want framed in my house. It's true. The last time that Sebulba DJed a high school reunion, I was covered in blood. So I don't want yeah. that to be the same ending. Yeah, he gets aggressive. Um, <laughs> he likes to box out. Well, Eric, how are you doing? I know I'm stealing your life force, but that aside, how are you going to the high school reunion? Did you get did you get an invite? Uh, yeah, you did include me as a plus one, but you you did write in very small letters. He's only coming because he has to hold my purse. Don't actually give yes. him any food. So exactly. I, I have the butler's plus one. Yes, and I should I should I had a lot of clarifying today. I should clarify. Eric and I didn't actually go to high school together. Of course, he's much older than me, but. I did. This is sort of a this is sort of a Groot situation where I built an Eric prototype in my basement when I was a teenager, uh, much like I believe Groot built built the minions. So he, <laughs> this robot version of Eric, sat in front of me. He sat behind me. He sat to my left and right. I surrounded myself with Eric's all around me. They would walk uh, in a sort of circle around me in high school to make sure I didn't get bullied. So, and then I met the real Eric and I said, you look just like the robots I built to protect and serve me. So it was all, it was all just like, ah, boy, Joan, John Cusack. It was serendipitous, serendipity, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Who was in that movie? Eric, 
<laughs> Buy Serendipity on VHS. I'm on it. Tell me more. Tell me more. Did I have a cool car? You have a DeLorean, Eric. You do have a cool car. Who do we have? <laughs> Enough stalling. It's time to, to it's time to get in the audio car and race on over to who our guest is today at 88 miles per hour. Absolutely. Boop, 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 boop. We have as our guest today. Huh, dig- never do that again. <laughs> Digital producer of podcasts and videos like Fun City, Reasonably Sound, and Rip Corp. It's Mike Rignetta. That's the sound of the DeLorean opening Whoa. and me getting out of it. And then dunk, me hitting my head on it. Uh, as, Ooh. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi. Hi. Oh, hi. Wow. That, what a cool jacket. Do you want a tab? Um, actually, I already have one and uh, I just, yeah, I reach into my jacket and I pull out a diet tab. Wow. Wait, they're all diet, right? Diet tab is, that's redundant. (laughs) Well, I mean, we let ATM machine slide, we let chai tea slide, so why not tab? You are such a gracious host. I just want to get that out of the, out of the way immediately. Huh. Diet, diet, tab. When people are looking at you because it's it, five calories or too many. I like this guy. Note to self, make some robot Mike Rugnettas. Mike Rugnettas? Rugnetta sounds like an appetizer in Sicily. Mike Rugnetta, what, I have to ask now, so I'm not rude, what is the origin of your last name? That's a very, I have no idea. I mean, it's Sicilian. Uh, I know that. Um, there is a, if you go to uh, the... The Rugnetta Facebook group. We, we <laughs> go, we're going there now. Which, I, I, have Facebook it, open it. At all times. Um, I have never looked at it myself, but my father is a big fan, very into ancestry and so on. Uh, you will find all kinds of people, most of whom <laughs> who live in Boston and New York, speculating uh, about the fact that the etymology of it is uh, people who in Sicily would create the nets out of the ropes to go fishing, which in a way makes sense because my lineage, there's a lot of uh, fishermen uh, in my past, uh, uh-huh. my ancestors and stuff. However, um, rug and net are, of course, English words. And so it would be very funny if in <laughs> Italian they were like, you know what, if we're going to choose a last name, here's how we should do it. What I like about this is that it's like I just read the website of like a weapons manufacturer. (laughs) And that's why we decided to create napalm for the United States government. (laughs) And I love the smell of Rugnetta in the morning. Thank you here for being here at 7 a.m., Mike, by the way. Yeah, the island is uh, very beautiful. I have have a question, though. What's with all of the very well-dressed men just standing around motionless? Yes, yeah, so that uh, thank you for asking that. I can't say too much. This was Brando's Island, um, oh. so this was the island that they shot uh, the island of Doctor Moreau on. That's redundant. I should just say Doctor Moreau. We know it's an, island. Know it's an island. Um So those those have those tie in with that. Let's just say that. Wink, wink, yeah. wink. I feel like I already know too much. During the purchase plan, they did tell us we had to leave everything as it was, and uh, here we are. 20 years later. Yes. I I sent off two men for the purchase plan. It was Silver and Clark, two incorrigible friends who (laughs) roamed the Brando purchase, as I called it at the time. Of course, I bought this island from France. Um, Well, we have to move on. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Something, 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 something manifest destiny. I want to see the other side of the island. I don't know. Mike, uh, Mike Rugnetta, or if your family's into fish, if I can call you Pike. Um... I prefer not. <laughs> huh. Note to self, uh, don't build these robot micrognettas. Uh, Mike, what are you here to talk to us about? I am here today to talk to you about synthesizers. <laughs> Sorry, I have this terrible cough. I gotta get I'll over never it. never do that again. Wow, synthesizers, huh? 1982 called... Should oh, I get back in the DeLorean? I, or? No, sorry. No, I have a time phone. I uh, let's see, 1982 call. Did they leave? They didn't. Eric, did you get a message? Did you take down the message? Uh, yes, it said, um, "Thanks for inventing rock and roll. I really appreciate it." Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, also, 1989 called says, "Shake it off and bad blood are two of the biggest fucking bops of all time." Yeah, agreed. 1989. <laughs> 1989 called and they're all and uh, they're really the backbone of the Eras tour. She's really excited about the whole thing. Absolutely, and I mean, Mike, synthesizers. This is going to be this is going to be a fucking blast. Also, uh, Rugnetta, a bird family, flock of seagulls. I mean, 
I am. The saliva is dripping down my neck. Just I can't waiting. write on this whiteboard fast enough. I can't connect all of the ah, ideas. Are, to make all these, ah, yes, all the references. Are both of you normally this g- glistening? It's, uh... <laughs> I, I mean, am, I am, but the, it's... <laughs> you, you caught me in the morning, which is when I'm at my peak glisten. <laughs> so, uh, Mike, thank you so much for being here to talk to us about synthesizers. Uh, speaking of high school, I did have a slight speech impediment in high school, and the number one word I couldn't pronounce correctly was synthesizer, but my teachers told my parents, how often is he going to have to say this in his life? So, <sighs> buckle in, let's see how this goes. Eric, why don't you go ahead and beep boo doo dee doo doo over to round one. Absolutely. Also, I hope you never know if it's a real story or not, and that's what makes it extra vulnerable. Round one, <laughs> just tell me about it. Uh, the what the show is namesake for round one is you just need to tell me about synthesizers. I have 10 foundational points about synthesizers that I pulled together from Wikipedia. Uh, Mike Rugnetta, please give us an overview of your topic in five minutes. You get points for each bullet that you address, especially if you make it sound interesting and cool. Are you ready? Uh, oh, God. I hope so. This is a lot of pressure. I don't normally get nervous, and I am nervous right now. <laughs> it's because my hand's on your leg? Is that why? I mean, one, I'm in the presence of greatness. Uh, you know. Brando's Island. Two, it was, it, was such, it was a great expense for you to bring me here, so I just really want to really make it worth your while. Don't worry. If you're nervous, just imagine everyone in this room is glistening. That does help. That's helping. I, but I don't have to imagine it because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, I got five minutes on the clock. Please start now. Okay, so first we're going to talk about what a synthesizer is. What is a synthesizer? It is a piece of electronics, very simply, uh, that generates sound, noises. Uh, you could uh, call it a musical instrument. I think, you know, you, you don't have to, but Thank you. generally considered a musical <laughs> instrument. And uh, what, uh, how, how does it do that? How does it make noises? With computer you, chips. You tell me. Oh, sorry. Yeah, computer chips. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you flipped the table and started to ask me questions. <laughs> how well, computer y- chips is it? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I want to make sure that you know how a synthesizer works <laughs> before I... That's how this works, this. right? Eric, I love this approach. 100 points to my All right, 100 points. <laughs> um, there are. It's, uh, you know, you got your resistors, you got your transistors, you got your capacitors, uh, you got your computer chips. Um, they There are multiple methods of uh, synthesis techniques. Um, there is waveform synthesis, uh, where you can make uh, different shapes uh, using very pure tones. You get things like sine waves, white noise, et cetera, et cetera, as uh, sound sources. And then you can use other pieces of the electronics uh, to shape that sound, uh, to make it different, um, to filter it, uh, to do all manner of things to it, to make what comes out of your synthesizer sound like whatever you want. Ooh. Is this clear so far? That's very clear. I'm, I'm learning so much. Okay, yes, great. thank you for checking in. There's a, there's no a... one asks us what how we're doing. We're always putting people through hellish human, <laughs> the stretching the human psyche yes. Uh, tasks. Yes, it is so rare to get an early check-in. Usually it happens around 3 p.m., 4 p.m., and by that time it's like, what did I even pay $10,000 for? You know? <laughs> I'm here for you. Um, there's a lot of questions about whether or not, you know, what the first synthesizer was. Um, are we talking about the teleharmonium, which is a very funny little device that was effectively used to uh, pipe music into restaurants over early telephone line technology? Uh, was it the RCA Mark, ooh, I always forget, Mark Three, Mark V? A very early, like, uh, res- uh, it didn't have a keyboard on it. It had this little, like, resistive strip that you played with your finger. I actually, I actually know this answer. The, uh, sorry, the, I'm excited. The very first synthesizer synthesizer was Walt Disney. He was a Nazi synthesizer. Um, <laughs> Famously. Sorry, my guy. I mean, now I'm going to start taking notes. No, keep going. No, keep going. Um, Don't tell Disney. Don't tell Disney's head. Don't tell Disney's no, 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 head. No, 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 He's not allowed. If Disney's head finds out I'm talking shit, I'm ruined in the billionaire community. The Brandos outside will keep him out. They're oh, in the program. Phew. They have his flesh. Phew. This does align with my theory that Walt Disney was, in fact, a robot. That, that explains the electronics. Oh, that wow. makes sense. He was trying to create a water slide in his own image. Yeah. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Um, the Mark, the RCA Mark, whatever, was the first thing that was called a synthesizer. Uh, it was the sort of like the Kleenex of the object, like the thing that was the brand name that then eventually became the generic label for all of these kinds of things. Uh, was it uh, the inventions of uh, Bob Moog, uh, the person who made the most sort of like famous, the first commercially successful synthesizer? I'm not here to settle that question. Um, I am here Aww. to make sure that you all uh, love and understand what a synthesizer synthesizer is. Yeah. Um, in their early days, uh, when they were uh, mostly the playthings of, uh, you know, boffins and engineers in various uh, labs and academic settings, uh, they were considered strange and avant-garde, right? You got people making punch cards, putting them into a machine, and then out comes beep boop beep boop beep. <laughs> Who wants to listen to that for fun? <laughs> yeah, uh, not when Eric says it. I mean, I do. <laughs> yeah. But I am strange, so. Yeah. It wasn't until uh, the, I think it was the 60s with uh, Wendy Carlos's Switched on Bach uh, release that was a huge uh, smash hit that synthesizers became uh, sort of like de rigueur, uh, increasingly popular and uh, were responsible for uh, so much of uh, the sound of popular music uh, in the last uh, 50, 60 years uh, until, you know, today you can very accurately say that you would not have pop music without synthesizers, uh, that they are, they are as common, I believe the Wikipedia entry says, in modern production <laughs> as the human voice. That's true. Wow. Someone did say that, and thank you for looking at the Wikipedia entry before. <laughs> what a good way to prepare for this this podcast. And that's five, four, three, two, one. And they sound dope. Fun. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> Wait, I said five, four, three, two, fun. Mike, what did you say? I said, and, they're, and they sound dope. <laughs> Another 100 points to Mike. Another 100 points. <laughs> Incredible. Mike Renetta, wonderful. Nobody's done an early check-in like this, and no one's ever done a buzzer beater. I think one of the most fun things in the world is a buzzer beater. Right when the time's running down, say one last point. Say a fun little thing. <laughs> and they're, So everyone should end their round one with, and they're sick. <laughs> they're yeah, very absolutely. good. Uh, and absolutely. And the thing that I'm here to talk about, absolutely. Can I, I can swear on the show, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Fucking melts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, melt is a British swear word, as we all know from watching Love Island. Um, Eric, you fucking melt. Why don't you add up in total Mike's score, please? Mike, you really did hit that first half. I think the most interesting thing is that Synthesizer is, in fact, the Kleenex. They uh, Something that I thought was super funny was that um, the folks over at Maug didn't want to call them Synthesizers because the RCA ones were Synthesizers, so that was a totally different thing, and now it's turned into that. Also, thank you for saying Maug first, so I didn't embarrass myself and say Moog first, and then the three fucking music nerds will jump through their RSS feed and, and strangle me. I Eric, really I have bad that. news for you. Oh, no, what? It's Moog like Vogue. Oh, it's Moog like, what am I saying? Ma wow. Maug like Smaug. Oh, Maug like Smaug. No, I, it's... Eric, you just landed on your fucking face, dog. <laughs> Adel, do you think that's worth any points? For humbling Eric, a man who is notoriously way too confident, <laughs> you get a thousand points, mate. <laughs> Um, and of course, thank you for quoting the Wikipedia entry back to me. That's going to give you another half point. That's six and a half points out of 10. Congratulations. Plus 200 points that you got in route uh, or in route. I don't want to say it incorrectly. Plus the thousand. Oh, it's actually Raug like Smaug. <laughs> it's Raug like Smaug. Plus the thousand points that you were just given. Uh, that brings you to 2,206.5 points. Yes. And I always take Raug 66 whenever I'm driving my DeLorean through Sweet Suit America. Uh, fantastic job, Mike. I do have some opportunities for some bonus questions if you'd like to maybe accrue a few more points. Uh, I'm scared, but willing. Perfect. First question, Mike. True or false? I actually created the robot named Walt Disney, and Walt stands for, I was maybe six when I created him, so Walt stands for Wobot, because I was a little kid, Wobot Ambulatory, let's tune! <laughs> This explains a lot about the men standing around the island, so I'm going to say true. Yes, that's right. And all these men are from San Antonio, which is where we get the organization Mensa. Oh, oh yes. Wow, you're yeah. so smart. Uh, 50 points to Mike for getting that, for answering that correctly. For another 50 points. Now, you mentioned Wikipedia and how they perhaps describe the synthesizer. If you can, a la a perfect wedding ceremony say webster's dictionary defines synthesizer as you have 30 seconds to define 
synthesizer, as Webster's Dictionary does. Eric, if you don't mind pulling that Got up. It. And for every word you match, actually, instead of 50 points, for every word you match in Webster's Dictionary's description, you will get 10 points. Wow. Webster's Dictionary defines a synthesizer as an electronic device that reproduces sine waves and shit. An electronic device that, I'm just going to say that, an electronic device that reproduces <laughs> sine wave, sound waves. <laughs> All right, uh, Mike, you got two words <laughs> correct, so you get 20 points. Here's the first one. Yeah. One that synthesizes, of course. Wow. Oh. And then the second definition, a usually computerized electronic apparatus for Appar- production and control of sound. So you got electronic and sound. Production and control is really, yeah, that makes a lot of yeah. sense. I Apparatus. I know. Yeah. It's not a Rube Goldberg machine. <laughs> hey, but it is sur- surely something that synthesizes. It is surely something that synthesizes. Thank you for officiating that definition. I know during my wedding um, to this island, I, I'm married to the island, I should have said, um, we had an officiant, I won't say their name, Richard Lewis, no big deal. And um, they defined Webster's Dictionary definition of money, which I thought was just so touching and so apropos, just so elegant in the moment. So I I really appreciate you doing that, Mike. Uh, That's funny because at my wedding, the officiant defined synthesizer, which is, it's embarrassing that I didn't know because. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Everyone knows that mailage is something that synthesizes. Uh, Wobot ambulatory, let's tune. (laughs) Uh, Mike, you were coming out of round one with an incredible amount of points, 1,276.5 points. Congratulations. Whoa, that's too many points. Take away the point five. Okay. <laughs> 1,276 points. That's that's only fair. I wish you had talked about uh, Tangerine Dream. That's the only thing I was yeah, upset about. Yeah, I started, because if you get started on prog rock, do you ever really stop? No. Yeah. Notoriously. That's yeah, the whole point. That's the whole point. Like, yeah. so, that's the prog in yeah, prog rock. Yeah, pro- yeah. yeah, progressively just talking about prog rock forever. Yeah. Uh... Pew, 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 pew. We have a special bonus game that I've put together for Mike Rugnetta. We're going to be playing a game within a game within a game. This is called Name Me Something That Yamaha Makes. You might... Wait, <laughs> Eric, you said pew, 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 which of course is the exact opening to Tom Sawyer by Rush. So now we have to pay them royalties. Honestly, when I th- when you got out of the DeLorean in the beginning of the episode, I was like, his name's Tom Sawyer. <laughs> so that was in my head. I was thinking that the whole time. I would be mad if you didn't put that in. So yeah, you know, I will. Yeah. So in between every round, I'm going to ask both Mr. Ofai and Mike Rugnetta huh? to name something that the Japanese company Yamaha makes. You are going to have to do a general thing because they make a whole lot of stuff and we're going to come into it. You're each going to get one guess per middle round. Mike, if you get something right, you get 10 points. Mr. Ofai, mm. if you get something, Mike loses 10 points. Mike Rugnetta, you can go first. Name me one department that Yamaha makes. Mo- motorized transportation. Motorized transportation is on there. I have motorcycles. motorcycles. That's 10 more points. Mm. They, they started that in 1955, which started as the Yamaha Motor Company. Mr. Rafai, it's now your turn. Name me something that Yamaha makes. Easy. Um, as per my second cousin, Randy Newman, pianos. Absolutely. I got pianos. Instruments is now totally off the board. They've been making reed organs since 1887, and then pianos, harmonicas, guitars, band instruments in general, like trumpets and the drums in 67. Instruments are off the board. And as my cousin would sometimes warble during Thanksgiving, you got the friend <laughs> in me. And we'd say, Randy, you are drunk as a skunk. Please go home. Pew, 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 pew. Now we are back to our regularly scheduled programming. Mr. Rafai, can I go to round two? Yes, you may. All right. Round two, you got no points from the bonus round. But now we're to round two, the perfect thing. Mike Rugnetta, what is a perfect encapsulation of synthesizers? If someone asked you, well, why do you love this thing so much? Why do you love those uh, beep boop and boppy boys? What would you say? Well, the first thing I would do is if we are in my studio or if we're in a place where I have, you know, access to synthesizers, I would just hand them one to play with for a second. Hey, Eric. What? Oh, he's getting back into the car. What's, what's in the, what's in the DeLorean? What's in the, what's in the DeLorean? What's in the DeLorean? <laughs> Eric, I brought you a synthesizer. If you want to just maybe <gasps> see for yourself. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Uh, so what I'm about to hand to Eric is, uh, it's a Stylophone Gen X1. It is a battery powered handheld synthesizer with a little, pen on it. You use the pen to touch a little keyboard and it completes a circuit. 
and it makes fun noises. Oh, it looks like when I go to CVS for fun to see what it's like to be a poor, and I have to sign my name with a little stylus on a screen. <laughs> Mike is in the studio. I'm, I am holding this right now. This is so cool. Okay, I'm twiddle, literally... twiddle some of those knobs. Ooh, I can twiddle the knobs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds different now. <laughs> we make a lot of jokes on this podcast, but I'm legitimately interested. I hate that that sounds so fun. <laughs> so here's, here's my other answer. Look, it made a silly sound. Oh, he twiddled, and now it sounds, co- now it sounds like a spaceship. Oh, no, what's that? No, Eric, what are, you, what are you doing? What's, do you guys feel that rumble? There's, what's that saucer? There's a saucer that appeared in the sky. Did you just call some? Oh, you called aliens. Oh, no. Everyone be okay. cool, everyone be cool. All right, I gotta put it back. Put it down. Cool. Put it down. Put it I gotta put it down, I gotta put it down. Okay, their, their beam is shooting down. It hit the DeLorean. <laughs> it's sucking up the DeLorean. <laughs> All right. Whew. And they're gone. And that's the end of the episode, because I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike just got taken up by the aliens. I guess we got to finish. Oh, he fell. He fell. Oh, <laughs> and he landed. Oh, thankfully, both his ankles broke his fall. Oh, Mike, close call. I stand up and hit my head on the DeLorean door again. <laughs> buddy, I got I to gotta recommend you don't do this interview from inside your car. Step on out, buddy. Or I guess you fell out. The car's gone. But um, hope you didn't have anything else valuable in there. Okay, my second of three answers. What makes synthesizers so great? Imagine this. Shh, close your eyes. I'm about to. Dragons. I'm about to. Oh, you're, oh you're, yeah, it's good. You're already on the right in the right. Track. <laughs> you're backstage. You're at a music festival. Oh, I, well, I was at the producers starring Nathan Lane and Matthew. Broder. I can tell you for a fact that you were not. You're at a music festival. Okay. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and you hear the crowd outside in front of the stage, and they are chanting. They want you to come out. And you and your bandmates, you look at one another and you nod, and you know you're about to crush this show. You're going to make these people so happy. Oh, I'm in the band. You're in the band. I, I just had, like, no, no, I just, no. I had like an artist pass. No, no, no. You are about to go out on stage, and you are going to shred. You are going to rock. You are yes. going to melt some faces. You go out on stage, you and your bandmates, and there is a roar of applause. Thousands, tens of thousands of people are, he- are here to see you. And they are thrilled that you are here, and you step behind your tower of keys. <laughs> Oh, yes. The, the battle station, the command center. Blinking yes. lights, knobs, sliders, keys. Yes, 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 you yes. You put your hand on one of the keys, ready to play the song that everybody is here to listen to. Yes. Yes. Ah, yes, Europe. You have just made everybody's day, week, month, year with the perfect sound for that emotion. I also just made Will Arnett's c- whole career. <laughs> uh, I wish you had told me wow. I was Europe from the beginning. I would have been able to envision that a little bit better. No, it's got to be a reveal. Whoa. Yeah, Eric, Eric, look. Look at my arm. Wow. Look, goosebumps. They're standing I've up. I've always heard about them, but I've never experienced them because I have so. I was born into wealth, <laughs> so I've never been excited. Look at my arm. <laughs> you haven't been this thrilled since the car went up at the end of Greece. Yes, wow. Amazing. My third of three answers. <laughs> There's more? I'm, I'm After s- the perfect answer? We're so thrilled! <laughs> I mean, you can use a synthesizer mm-hmm. to make any sound. The world is your oyster. You make an oyster from a synthesizer. Wow. <laughs> Synthesize the sound of an oyster, I guess. The, dream, the dreams of an oyster. A famous, the dreams of an oyster. Dream of an oyster. That's my favorite Tangerine Dream <laughs> album. <laughs> Eric, make sure we're having oysters for dinner. It's a, regardless of what we're having, it's always oysters Rockefeller. Yes, served by one of his descendants. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Mr. Rafai, can you uh, break yourself out of this wonderful reverie, uh, this trip, Ooh. this trip ditch of reveries that uh, Mike Rugnetta has created for us? And uh, what do you think? How many points out of 10? Hey, Eric, you're not getting paid by the big word, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> 
the, the, the synthesizer I was playing with opened up new synapses. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know that word before. I Last Christmas, I opted between getting you a word of the day calendar or a far side calendar. And I, obviously, I chose poorly. Next week is cow tools, but we're doing synthesizers this week. Mike, not only do you get a perfect score for this round, but my friend, you have illuminated inside me. You have lit the pilot light of passion, of music, of oysters, <laughs> and of love. Uh, Eric, write, in, write down on my schedule, have sex with my wife tonight, the island. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's right down. Do you need me to print out the definition for synthesizer? That'd be great. Actually, yeah. yes. Uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yes, I'll go to the office so much. center and do it later. Mike, that was outstanding. I was whisked. I don't even need a DeLorean to be whisked in time to being, I, I assume, whatever the lead singer of Europe or the, I don't know if Europe was one guy like Falco or I don't even know if Falco <laughs> was one guy. Anyway, regardless, we're getting too deep in the weeds. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Please feel free to take anything from the house, even Eric, um, on your way out. Please. Uh, and Eric, let's let's call this 3,000 points. 3,000 points. Absolutely. All right. That brings your total up to 4,286 points. Very good, Mike. And wait, there's more. For a bonus question, Mike, my introduction to the synthesizer as a young man was a little movie called Revenge of the Nerds, where at the very end of the movie, the nerds, the unliked um, outcasts who had their own fraternity somehow, played a song that was sung and rapped by Lamar. I believe also Anthony Edwards was in the band. If you could name anyone else, any of the other nerds besides Anthony Edwards and Lamar, you will get a hundred Oh, points. no. And I'll count you in. The song went a little something like this. Clap your hands, everybody. Body, everybody. And everybody, clap, clap, clap your, hands. your hands. It's Lambda, 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 Lambda and Omega, Omega Moo. I, I, I have such, it's like seared into my memory. I can, I can picture the haircuts, the vests, mm -hmm. the yep. spotlights. Uh-huh. I do not remember the names of any of the other nerds. That's fine. That's and okay. that's that's absolutely fine, Mike. We're gonna move on. But actually, oh, do you want a Kleenex, Mike? Sorry, you have a little that, um you have a little something in your nose there. What is that? Is that some sort of is that Coke or is that no, it's green? It's like rolled up in a what is that? What is that in your nose? It's some sort of bu uh, booger? Booger? Oh yes, booger was one of the nerds. <laughs> Wow, I really had to hold your hand through that. Yeah, <laughs> I did not. And I, if I'm being perfectly honest, I still don't remember Booker. <laughs> <laughs> Arguably the most famous of the nerds. I like I like how this turned into like season six of Parks and Rec outtake by the, by the <laughs> end of that joke. You have something in your nose. You have some Sub cocaine? Uh, 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 Sebulba in my nose? <laughs> uh, it's a, uh, an invitation to my high school reunion. <laughs> Hey, it's Eric, and this is our special little mid-roll place. Just a little spot where you can, you know, hang out and put on your tie and start your shirt without Adol looking at you and feeling uncomfortable and him, like, critiquing your tie tying ability. Because what even is a triple Windsor that feels like something that shouldn't exist? I only know of one Windsor, let alone two. But three? That's unconscionable. Uh, so yeah, you can just hang out here in the mid-roll. Stay for as long as you want. I'm, I'm just making some tea, which is really just, you know, taking a leaf outside and putting it in some water. And I call it tea because it's nice. Um, if you want me to have real tea, you could join our Patreon at patreon.com slash tmaipod. If you, I hope you enjoy the ad-free episodes because uh, they're nice and... You won't, you don't get ads. And if you don't want ads, just do all you have to do, join the Patreon. Now Patreon is uh, letting Spotify listeners put uh, that into their app. And I think that's really nice of Spotify to do. Millionaires, billionaires being so kind to give you the thing that you want. Uh, Patreon.com slash TMAI pod if you want that, if you like that, if that's good for you. You know, if you don't want to just listen to this show and you need more shows, you can check them out at Multitude. I think it were like head, heart, gut. If you wish you had more Multitude shows to catch up on, well, we make a weekly debate show featuring all of the hosts here called Head, Heart, Gut. 
Every month, we take an iconic set of three items from pop culture or the world we live in and pit them against each other. In the first three weeks, each of our contestants will present their choice on a definitive survey of greatness, and we have a judge come in on the final week to finally decide it. We have figured out which is the best fruit, which is the best movie sequel, which is the best thing to do at a theme park, and much, much more. There are years of arguments for you to go check out now. You might not have heard of Head Hard Gut because it's exclusively for members of the Multi Crew, our membership program that supports all of Multitude. But if you want a free preview of that, just go search for Head Hard Gut in your podcast app and find the sample episodes. You can listen to eight full episodes for free. Again, search Head Hard Gut in your podcast player for a sample and see what the Multi Crew has been loving for years. We are sponsored this week by Robin's Burger Cree Arts. Get it? It's Cree art, Cree eight, Cree. Yeah. Did you know that Robin's Burger produces more than just the classic jigsaw puzzles and board games that we know so well? Introducing Cree art by Robin's Burger, the ultimate painting by number experience. You'll find everything you need to start your artistic journey with today with Robin's Burger's carefully curated painted by number kits. Whether you're a seasoned artist looking for a new challenge or a beginner eager to explore the world of painting, Robin's Burgers kits cater to all skill levels and ages. Embrace the therapeutic benefits of painting by number as you melt away the stresses of daily life and find solace in the act of creation without facing the pressure of a blank canvas. You can easily explore Robin's Burgers' wide selection of enchanting designs on Amazon, ranging from majestic landscapes to adorable animals and everything in between. Let your imagination run wild and embrace the joy of painting with Cree Art by Robin's Burger. Shop Cree Art, C-R-E-A-R-T, on Amazon today. And now, back to the show. All right, we are back within the game, within the game, within the game. Name Ooh, me something yes, that yes. Yamaha makes. Mike, you have another chance for 10 more points. Name me something that Yamaha makes. Speakers. Oh, was that instruments? Speaker, okay, no, great. speakers great. counts. Audio equipment starting in 1922 with the crank phonograph first. That's 10 points to Mike. Uh, Mr. Rafai, what, do you know something? That, uh, name me something that Yamaha makes. So, yam, of course, is the Japanese word for yam. And aha is the Japanese traditional laugh. So, of course, they made their bread and butter early on by making funny potatoes. <laughs> funny potatoes and, and any agriculture is not on the list, unfortunately. No. Huh. Well, I know the truth. This is maybe before, before they hit it big, but that's fine. Yeah. I'm happy to give Mike more points. That is 10 points to Mike Rugnetta. Congratulations. You are at 4,296 points. Hum I'm humbled. Humbled. Grateful, really. Grateful. I appreciate that. Ten more points to Mike. <laughs> Ten more points to Mike. Eric, you little funny potato, why don't you go ahead and take us over to round three? <laughs> round three is the question and answer period. We have some follow-up questions for you, Mike Rugnetta, and there will be the gotcha questions that Sarah Palin warned us all so much about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please answer as many of these as possible. Mike, are you I'm ready? I'm going to do my best. I'm ready. Yes. Early synthesizers were viewed as avant-garde, valued by countercultural scenes for their ability to make new sounds but with little perceived commercial potential. Now they're used in nearly every genre of music. Do you miss them being weird? Uh, I mean, are they not still weird? Correct answer. <laughs> yeah. 100 points. Good point. Good I point. think, yeah, like, um, uh, there's nothing inherently normal or not normal about any instrument, I don't think. The synthesizer, mm -hmm. doubly so. Like, yeah, if you want to... If you want to make a piano sound with a synthesizer, you go nuts. That's great. Yeah, nice. Have fun. Vangelis did it, you know. Uh, the one guy that did it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Chari mm -hmm. Chariots of Fire theme, the only, famously the only song to have used a synthesized piano. Oh. Um, but, uh, you know, you can, still, you can still make all kinds of really bizarre noises if you want, and uh, no one's going to stop you. Well, I, you know, some people might try to stop you, but... Uh, sure. Nancy Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> Outstanding job. Uh, next question, Mike. Peter Frampton used a talk box to create his famous sound in the song, Do You Feel Like We Do? This is not a synthesizer, but a close cousin, and he had to keep just like Randy Newman, and he had to keep a tube in his mouth to sing into. Should synthesizers adapt to needing to put a tube inside your body? And if so, where should it go? Just say the butt. Big, just, just say butt. All you gotta do is say butt. Please say butt. Please say butt. 
butt. Just say butt. Come on, butthole. The, the on, golf right the ball butthole. is on the tee, and the tee is a butt. <laughs> this is this is Booger all over again. Just oh, come on, just say butthole. Just say butthole. I'm gonna I'm gonna extend butthole. this as long as I possibly can. <laughs> This is this is just gold. Just 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 you're, 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 we're right here. We're on a podcast. As a, podcast. as a producer of podcasts, this right here is golden tape. This the, the comedy pod. It's a comedy podcast to say butthole. That's what everyone wants you to do. It's, just it's in the it. hole. It's in the, the butthole. Hole. It's in the butthole. Come Obviously, on. the synthesizer tube has to go in the butthole. Yes. Yay. Yes. Oh, Eric. Eric, for the first time in history. For the first time ever, it, tell me about it. We are awarding a million points. <laughs> yeah, a million points? Yeah. If more guests would just say butthole. Future guests, note. take out your notepads. I mean, yeah, future guests, if you want any, any tips for getting a million points, just give me a call. <laughs> And yes, I will just say sure the word you... butthole to you. <laughs> <laughs> we have on the synthesizer. You can push a key uh-huh. and it says butthole. Mike yeah. saying butthole. And if you have those tips, make sure you lube them. Uh, final question, Mike. Some acts felt that using synthesizers to create sounds was cheating. Queen, the band, not the woman, wrote in their album liner notes that they did not use them. What disclaimer can you immediately make about yourself before people meet you? O- only, only synthesizers were used. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's it. The anti queen anthem. Yeah, that's it. Uh, outstanding. 100 no, points. No acoustic sounds of any kind. Yes. Oh, I love that. I think you yes, still I see this that. sometimes. Like, I think Tom Morello famously writes in the liner notes or wrote in the liner notes of the Rage Against the Machine albums that it's like all sounds on these albums are made by uh, voice, guitar, drums, and bass. And that's it. You know, because there's some like pretty far out noises on the, the Rage uh, records. And Tom very famously has this massive collection of uh, like guitar pedals and stuff. So what he's saying is like, you know, no synthesizers were used. I worked really hard to make all of these sounds just with a guitar. I want to see more albums that are like, these sounds have never passed through open air yeah. during production. No yes. microphones. There are no instruments. Yes. <laughs> just what's tape? Never heard of it. Only MP3s mm-hmm. the whole way through. <laughs> MP3s all the way MP3's down. MP3s all the way down. John Green might write. I, <laughs> I love that. This I love. And also, Tom Morello, wh- what a stud. You never hear Zach De La Roca <laughs> in his liner notes giving credit to anyone. <sighs> Fuck him. I won't do what he told me. Fuck him. I won't we're, do what he told me. Taking a, taking a stand here. Yeah, I'm taking a stand against Zach De La Roca. <laughs> the poor man's... Oh, what's the lead singer, Counting Crows? At the poor man's Adam Durwitz. <laughs> Well, I mean, if he had dated Jennifer Aniston, he wouldn't be so bored. Or Courtney Cox. That's true. It, man, that was wild. I'm learning a lot. Eric, while you tally up the score for round three, I do have one bonus question for Mike, which is, I famously, in the mid-80s, created a cartoon. It's about a family of people who live in a very nice house. It, it debuted on the Tracy Ullman show. I called it The Simpsons. <laughs> Now, these were fully synthesized cartoon characters. There was the dad, Hammer. There was the mom, Morge, or Maug. Um, In the Simpsons, I had an episode. Of course, this never debuted because of legal reasons. I had an episode that played, I believe it was at Lollapalooza, and Peter Frampton actually guest starred. Mm. And during his set, he sang, Do You Feel Like I Do?, and he hit a pedal and something flew out of a machine behind him. Do you know what flew out of a machine behind him? I believe it was a pink elephant. Oh, I think it was a pink pig. Oh, was it a pink pig? But you got pink right, and no one ever does. She's underrated, in my opinion. So let's give you another 500 points. Absolutely. That brings your total up to 5,006 points plus a million butt points. <laughs> Legally, I have to keep them distinct. I believe that's a, oh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, otherwise you get pink. Yeah, eye. that's health, that's health code in New York state. So yeah. yeah. Or I guess pink pig. The Simpsons. All right. One more time. Let's talk about what are some other what are some other things that Yamaha makes. Mike Grunetta. One more time, Eric. Are you making a Daft Punk reference? One more time. (laughs) 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 Mike Grunetta, tell me one more thing that Yamaha makes. Uh, Sailboats. Sailboats and other aquatic vehicles are not on the list, unfortunately. Uh, Mr. Fi, do you have one? I think I just gave it. French electronica duo Daft Punk. 
They clearly Yamaha made them. You can see it written on their helmets. Yeah, here's the thing. I'm going to give this to you because Metal Alloys is on there. So I'm going to give, give you the 10 points. Unfortunately, I have to subtract that from Micrognetta's score. Wait, is, is Yamaha like a, are they also a mining company? Okay, so now <laughs> as, <laughs> let me, now that this is the last round, I will read out all the ones you didn't get. They make furniture. They have been since 1903. They make sporting goods, starting with archery. They started their own music schools in the 50s. They make semiconductors. They had their own record company. And most notoriously, uh, of course, they started their own sports teams. They have a rugby what? team and a foot and a soccer team in Japan. What were the mascots of these, like the Yamaha crotch rockets? Or what were the mascots? <laughs> the, the Yamaha metal alloys. <laughs> uh, actually, really, the soccer team one specifically is really funny. It actually used to be the work team at Yamaha, and then it got rolled up mm. into professional soccer. Because yes, and it's, like, it it's like the third tier of Japanese soccer. Imagine imagine you're, you're just playing a couple rounds of soccer with the boys after work. And it's you know your your work league, and then eventually that just becomes your job. Yeah, and then <laughs> yeah, the Charles like, Bar you and Charles Barkley are this together. This is what you do now. Uh, after that bonus bonus round, Eric, let us know what is Mike's score. Uh, Four thousand nine hundred ninety six points plus, of course, the million butt points. Thank you, of course. Thank you for saying butt points. Uh, yes, of course, that doesn't go into your actual total. Those are butt points, and you can redeem those at our butt store on your way out. I did I saw that? Yeah, I saw that on the way. Of course. In. Yeah. I'm no dummy. When you leave my island, you do have to exit through the butt store. <laughs> Everything exits through the butt store. Uh, let's go ahead and shit our way on over to round four, the Wheel of Extraordinary Challenges. Mike, I've instructed my manservant to prepare a few wacky mini games here to test your intellectual and creative metal. Eric, just like Yamaha, metal. Eric, what do we have today? We have the game, What Does This Company Actually Make? A wide range of of companies mm. made synthesizers over the years, and they all have really funny names. Uh, but a lot of them don't sound like they actually make synthesizers. Mike, I'm going to read out some companies that make synthesizers, and you're going to tell me what it sounds like they actually make. I'll even give you some background that I've collected for you. Okay, great. All right. So the first one, let's start with a classic. Now we're talking about Moog Music. Of course, the original, an American synthesizer company uh, founded in 1953 by R.A. Moog. <laughs> Nailed it. They nailed it. What? You said R.L. Stein wrong. <laughs> what, Mike, what does it sound like Moog actually makes? I think Moog sounds like a car parts company. <laughs> is, is it a reliable one or like a shoddy one? Yeah, really like second rate. <laughs> uh, yeah. Definite, definitely yeah. American made, but in a way that makes you go, oh, I don't know about that. Yes. Moog Rev. <laughs> down, 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 down. <laughs> It's like you go in there and the mechanic already whistles as soon as he pops open, <laughs> pops over the hood of your car and be like, oh, you got a, you got a Moog? Ugh. It's a tough break, buddy. Is it possible that there is a car company that actually is called Moog, M-O-O-G? It might be. Pulled that out of thin air, but it might just be that it was in my brain. Yeah, nope, they, there is a company <laughs> called wow. Moog Parts that makes steering suspension and drivetrains, 100%. Eric, since Mike got that 100%, 100 million butt points <laughs> added to Mike's total. Okay, 100 That's almost enough to get an Xbox One in the gift store. <laughs> All right, you're up to 101 million butt points. All right. <laughs> wait, wait, boy, I want to do something with Dalmatians and butts, but this is, do kids listen to this show, Eric? I can't <laughs> Probably imagine. Probably not, no. Okay, yeah. Make them dog butt points. Yeah, okay. They're dog butt and make points. Me a, also, take note. Make me a fur coat made out of dog butt holes. <laughs> yeah, Cruella will, Cruella will be over uh, in, the next, in the next episode. Uh, Mike, here's the next company. It's uh, Bukla and Associates. Bukla, Don Bukla of Berkeley, California, started this company in 1963. Uh, in 2008, the assets were, it kind of got all rearranged. And then now this is a new entity called Bukla USA. Bukla USA sounds like where I would go for, like, risotto, lasagna. Yeah, that is precisely what I was going to say. Bukla is, like, Bukla is a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, you get you get your Bukla de Beppo. Sure. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> like, whatever. But Bukla's. I, I like that the holding company is Bukla and Associates and the restaurant is Bukla USA. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. 
Uh, Mike, here's the next one. Teenage Engineering, a Swedish computer electronics company manufacturer started in 2005 by a bunch of Swedish guys' names that I don't feel like reading out. Uh, Teenage Engineering, what do they make? Incredibly uh, ostentatious scooters. (laughs) Yeah, dude. Like multicolor, uh, customizable, modifiable, the most irritating thing on the road. Yeah. Well, these are modifiable, (laughs) hydrophiable. (laughs) And you know, producer star Matthew Broderick is going to buy one of those scooters. You you know that the city of Austin got like, gave them a really big grant to make those scooters that are all over the place. You go to to Boston and uh, you go over the Longfellow Bridge and you look into the Charles and there's just tons of teenage engineering scooters in the water. (laughs) Boston. Everybody has had enough. (laughs) Uh, that's actually a, a wonderful pivot into the next thing on my list, New England Digital Corporation, which was uh, wow. founded in Vermont and has been around was around from 1976 to 1993. Um, their main product was the Dartmouth Digital Synthesizer because they used it so much in academic spaces at Dartmouth College. New England Digital Corporation, Mike, what do they make? Something ve- like valves. <laughs> Something just incredibly uh-huh. mundane that just has a readout on it. Val- valves. Yeah. Yeah. I like you see their commercial, and it's like the official valve sponsor of the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, they're very high quality valves. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> if you need a valve, like where else are you gonna go? Uh, Our sponsor today, Valve. Co- no. <laughs> the pressure is on. <laughs> New England Digital Corporation, Valves. Yeah, and if you don't believe it from me, here is Boston Red Sox legend David Ortiz. <laughs> As played by Keenan Thompson. <laughs> uh, and we have our final one here. I have Moog again, but it's actually pronounced Moog. What does the company Moog make? Ice cream. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be ice cream. Now, I because we're living in 2023 where ice cream is plentiful, are we talking about like a Ben and Jerry's? Is this a Jenny situation? Or is this like a tub you get at Kroger that's $4 for like three pounds of sherbet? I think that it really straddles the line where it's very cheap. Uh, and you get a lot of it, but every single name of the ice cream is a pun on Moo. <laughs> uh, unbelievable. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, one billion butt points. Sorry, dog butthole points. What are we doing? What are we doing here? This, this economy keeps shifting around. I know billionaires have so much. Billionaires are ruining the are that, ruining the economy. Is this what it's like living in a collapsing economy? I'm sorry. I mean a very stable island. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. You're talking about my wife, also Mike. With one billion one hundred and one million uh, butthole points, you are so close to being able to get an Xbox One in the oh, butthole. I've always wanted an Xbox One. So close. I've always wanted that specific Xbox One. <laughs> It comes with it comes with MLB the Show 2008. I mean, you took out all of those YouTube ads for that specific <laughs> Xbox, and yeah, I, it's it's, uh, it's mere exposure effect. Like I can't. It's all I want. It's just good, good branding, good marketing. Incredible. Well, that takes us to the end of round four, uh, Mr. Rafai. How do you think Mike did? I think he did outstanding. Um, I I mean, I just I just gave him one billion butthole points. I don't know what else he wants. Uh. I don't know, I'll give him another 100 points. All right, another 100 points. It brings you up to 5,096 points and 1,101,000,000 butthole points. I feel now the way that I have felt in the past at, say, a Chuck E. Cheese with armfuls of red tickets, mm. knowing that I am going to go to the counter and get a bouncy ball. You're going to get a sticky hand, yeah. and you're going to like it. Eric, would you please subtract 100 points from Mike's total? <laughs> um, I guess someone didn't see the plaque outside my mansion that says my dad was killed by that cheerleader bird robot at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> How do you, he That's said- funny. My dad built that robot. Oh, no. I think I am that robot. What? what? I got to go to the Facebook group about this. <laughs> Well, let's try and power through this. Um, don't, don't freak out. Adel, don't freak out. Uh, I have one final, who, one final bonus round for you here, Mike. And we're going to go through this very quickly just to get you out of here, motherfucker. Okay, I'm going to say a song that involves some uh, amount of synthesizer, and you're going to tell me the band who played or sang that song. Are you yes, ready? I'm ready. Don't you want me? Uh. Oh no, I'm blanking. 
No worries. Next song, Sweet Dreams, parentheses, are made of this. That's the Eurythmics. That's the Eurythmics. Ooh. How about Gary Newman? Nope, that's, that's Gary, sorry. It says, uh, it says Gary Newman cars. cars. Yeah. I assume it was a car. <laughs> Whoops. I could have I done it the other way around. <laughs> How about West End Girls? Uh, that's the, that's the uh, man, the Pet Shop Boys. Love the Pet Shop Boys. You got it. Blue Monday? Blue Oyster Cult? Blue Oyster Club? No, I believe that's a fictitious bar from Police Academy. <laughs> How about that? You did not get that one right. That was that? that was New, New Order. Order. Oh, mm. I should know that. That's embarrassing. How about Enjoy the Silence? Uh, that's Depeche Mode. Perfect. How about Take on Me? Aha. Uh-huh. Ooh, so close. That's actually by Yam Aha. <laughs> it was a cover. I'm so sorry. That, I'm sorry. I didn't read that aloud. They also <laughs> made the '80s. The '80s hits is one of the departments they're in. Bizarre Love Triangle. I no clue. Don't even know what that is. Ooh, that was already mentioned band New Order. Wow, that's a real blind spot, Yeah, I huh? guess so. <laughs> wow. Should I go? Actually, yes, you should go. You should go and you should take your little dad-killing robot with, you know, Sir, you know what? Uh, Mr. Mr. Where's, Rafai, where's the... hold on. We, we yeah. do have that one final thing we have to, we do have to do. Yeah, okay, yeah, fine. For a final bonus butthole point, you will answer this random trivia question about the world's most perfect film, Grease. You ready, Mike? I I have a confession. I've yes. never seen Grease. Does this disqualify him from answering the question? I feel like it does, at least. Eric, take away all his okay. points. <laughs> Le- leave, leave the butthole points. Okay. <laughs> take away all his points. They're gone. Here's what I'll say, Mike. If you watch Grease in the next two weeks, give Eric a call. We'll reinstate your points. Okay. Yeah. Until then, you're at, a, you're at a goose egg. Unless you can win all your points back right now if you answer me this question about Grease. How many thousands of performances did the original Broadway show run for? And this is, if you haven't seen the movie Grease, I'm sure you don't know this answer. 420,000. You are so close. <laughs> it was 3,388. That's what I meant to say. I, also I, meant, accepted, I meant to say the correct number. <laughs> I also would have accepted New Order. <laughs> This is just... Uh, no, I'm, wait, hold on. Mike, you said you meant to say the right number? I meant to say the right... I meant to say the correct, the correct <sighs> answer. Fuck. Eric, that's another first. More people, if they get a question wrong, should just say, <laughs> yeah, I meant to say that. Reinstate his points, please. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Ms- this is a real emotional roller coaster. <laughs> well, you, we checked your height, and you are tall enough to ride this emotional roller coaster. I do have to insist you please watch Grease in the next two weeks. Mike, I forgive you and your dad for building a robot that killed my dad. Again, a cheerleader bird whose name will not be uttered in this house or on this island. No. I forgive you because, again... You had one of my favorite episodes. You were an absolute delight. You time traveled me in my mind to perform the song Final Countdown just through beeps and boops. You made me think about Bebop and Rocksteady and how they're, you know, basically synthesizers with the sounds they make. <laughs> you reminded me of my favorite restaurant of all time, Buco de Beppo, which de Beppo also sounds like a noise a synthesizer de might Beppo. make. Yeah. Mm, de <laughs> so, Mike, leave here as a friend. Eric, what's his final total? Well, first, I have to ask you if you could just check uh, in your super secret bank account. What is the conversion of butt points to regular points? There's no conversion. They're worthless. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're <laughs> completely, completely they're like, incompatible. It's monopoly money. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you do get a sticky hand on the way out. Maybe we'll we'll see if you can get that Xbox One controller. But it does give you 4,996 points which actually makes you tied for fourth on our big board. You are tied with Lauren Shippen, who talked about Sondheim. Uh, in third, Dr. Moya McTee are talking about exoplanets. In second, Chris and D. Mercurio talking about Minecraft. And in number one, Julia Shafini talked about Greek mythology with 6,638 points. Actually, uh, sorry, Lauren Shippen talking about Saugheim. <laughs> like Smaug. Right, it's just like it's rides with Smaug, right. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. You were so much fun. Mike, is there anything that you would like to plug or plug in? Ooh. I mean, I would like to plug Fun City, which is a podcast that I make that you should listen to. It is a TTRPG podcast where we play Shadowrun and Still Fleet. Uh, it's a group of very funny folks uh, who uh, help uh, help each other tell really, really fun stories about the super future. Uh, fun City takes place in New York City in the year 2102. And I would like to plug in mm. a synthesizer. Yes. Outstanding. I am Dracula. <laughs> that was that was like the intro to Dracula, right? You know Dracula's theme song. We, we all know, know Dracula's, Dracula's theme, theme song. song right? Come on, yeah, we do. You're yeah, playing it on anytime. the radio constantly. 
Did someone say Dracula? Looks at camera, smiles with fangs. That's all for this episode of Tell Me About It. Tune in next week. You will tune in next week for more beetle doo doo dees, more da doo doo doos, and more Buka da Beppo, which is the most fun thing you can say in a Dracula <laughs> voice. Say goodbye, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, Eric.